Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are loving, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful manual that you give us, God, so that we can live the life and live it effectively, that you will be glorified. And so, Father, we just thank you, Father, that you'll continue to guide us and direct us by the Holy Spirit, oh God, and we receive all that you have placed in our heart and and shared and shared with me, God, we just pray, Father, that it would illuminate our hearts and we would go to action, God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You know what? Today we're going to talk about, we're going in a way different uh, direction that we normally go. We're going to talk about our bodies. Please forgive me that y'all ate those carbs out there because we're going to talk about you in a minute. <laughs> That was a setup, right? No. Nah. Praise the Lord. But, but we're going to make changes in our lives because, there, you know, when we, as we get older, or I would say as we mature, there are things that people say when you turn 20 that, that this and that is going to happen. When you turn 30, they got this list of stuff and different things that they say when you turn 40, stuff start breaking down and... <laughs> start making sounds that you didn't ask for and et cetera. But, oh, my goodness, when you hit the silver 50, then they're talking about, mm, what in the world is going on? <laughs> Can't get up and move like you used to. Energy levels gone and et cetera. Been there, done that. But if, uh, if you know, if those things are still happening, we, we play a part in it too as well. And so if we are expecting certain things and doing the same thing, that's called what? I mean, expecting, we're doing something and we're expecting a different result. We're doing the same thing that is not carrying us in the right direction, but we're expecting that good result. It's called, starts with the I. And an N, next letter, insanity. Insanity. So, if, we're, if our eating habits and the way we take care of our temple is not going in the direction that we want it to go into and we continue to do what we're doing, and it's not going to get better, is it? So we get on the phone and we can call the doctor, doctor, all day long, and he can give us that pop-out pill, but guess what? If we don't deal with the, the root, all it does is Cause that thing to just lay dormant. But the but the the root cause is still working. But we want to get to the root. And a lot of the root is what? Us. You know, anybody that knows anything about me know I love cooking. That's like therapy for me. I love gardening. That's like therapy for me. But a lot of times, the, the, the gardening does not come as often as the cooking. And then with the cooking comes the eating. And uh, most people I know enjoy eating. I mean, when you think about it, you think about when you have a gathering at your home. It's always around good conversation, fun, and et cetera. And even in the Bible, they had a lot of gatherings. And food was the item that was there for them to receive off and nourish their bodies and refresh. Food is good. It's the type of food that is the problem. And um, most of the time, we know when we get in a hurry, the first thing that is easy to grab is fast food. And I sometimes believe that fast food is a setup. It's fast. But unfortunately, it doesn't go through our bodies as fast as the fast food should be going. So why call it fast food? It's moving slow. It slows you down. It, sl it slumps you and puts you in that position. And it's loaded with a lot of additives. It's loaded with a lot of fillers. And that stuff, your body has to process it. So we're going to look at all those type things today. We're going to talk about carboholics. Keep 
can you just smell it, just hearing that word? Your taste buds sometimes will kind of give you that taste. We're like, man, you don't have to wait for a commercial. You could be sitting there, man, I got a taste for. I was kind of like, what does that mean, I got a taste for? It's not there, is it? But your mouth will make you feel like you got to have a piece of candy, a soda, some chips, snacks. But when we consume them outside of moderation, I mean, it's okay to do it. It's just the moderation. And most of the time when our bodies crave it, it's usually late in the evening when we're trying to get this little pickup. I'm so tired. I need a pickup. I need a pickup. We're not going to go in that refrigerator and make a salad. We're going to grab something that's already in some wrappers in a bag, and we're going to consume it. And it gives us that pickup we need, right? For a short period of time. Then it slammed you from that point on, and then you go like, man, I had some energy, but it didn't last. So we're going to look at some of these things today, and I trust and pray that it will be a blessing to you. Are you ready to go in? Are you ready to make changes? Amen. So that also affects our rest, too, as well. The types of food we eat affects our rest. The amount of water we drink affects our bodies. It affects our cells and everything. So it's all tied together. So we're going to go in and we're going to look at that today. So today we want to get in that place where we're going to learn how to refresh ourselves and, and care for our bodies as God intended us. So today our topic is taking care of our bodies, and we are ready. Amen? So we want to learn how to protect it. We want to learn how to maintain our bodies and do as much preventive things as we possibly can to so that we can get the most, the optimal function out of our bodies, and that's so important. Because as we get to those ages of 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70, we're getting closer to getting out of here, but we need our bodies. We know that over a period of time, there's a lot of wear that comes on our bodies. But if we eat healthy, healthier, it will make a difference in our bodies. Well, you might say, well, Sister Bird, I, I've been, I'm busted. I've been doing it wrong all these many years. How many know today is a new day? It's a beginning. You can get new beginnings because guess what? The foods we eat can start helping to repair our bodies. So even though things might be going on, they might have challenges, and we all do, today can be the day, a new day, a new beginning, so we can go in the direction that is pleasing to the Lord because we are uh, told by God to take care of these temples. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost, and we are to take care of our bodies. And by taking care of it, we give it what it needs spiritually. We give it what it needs physically. We give it what our bodies need emotionally and mentally, too, as well. So we, we have this wonderful manual from the Lord that tells us how to do all those things. And we're going to look at some of those today as well. So as we take responsibility for our health, why, is, why do we need to? It's necessary, isn't it? Well, in order for us to enjoy good health and to get our health restored back uh, that might have been com compromised, we have to trust God and believe God, but we also have to learn how to do this thing and how to uh, take care of these temples and our families too as well so that we can, you know, they'll be able to have that good quality of life in their lives as well. Because most of us remember as we were growing up, one key thing I Thing that our parents would say to us is, eat all your food, clean your plate. They would tell you eat the vegetables, but you know, a lot of times we didn't want that part. We wanted the carbs. That was the better part, and etc. And then when we think about it, we went to school and we learned about the food pyramid. Y'all remember the food pyramid? Can somebody tell me if you can remember? What was the largest amount in the food group on that pyramid? Them carbs. Why? Why was carbs number one? As far as the largest amount of stuff to be eating. And then we wonder why are kids 
and us because we were trained to have about six servings of carbs. Six servings? Six to eight servings of carbs on your plate, but your vegetables and your fruit, you got carbs and vegetables and fruit, so why do we even count that? And then that's not counting your grains, which are carbs. That's a lot of carbs. So we got carb, 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 carb. So the dairy and the protein was the only two things that didn't have the carbs like that because protein usually don't have uh, carbs in it. And your dairy has a, sometimes have a little bit of carbs in it. But all those other levels are loaded with carbs. So when we look at the food pyramid, and I think I have one, that's a lot of carbs to be consuming. And then we wonder why diabetes is one of the highest numbered uh, diseases that we have in our country today. So the 2021 says bread, cereal, rice, and pasta group, six to 11 servings. So they changed it. Now, if you have, if you're consuming a lot of carbs, we're gonna, it's gonna cause you to increase your weight. And our bodies get to the point that we're not burning off the right things. So we need to burn the fat, but we're burning sugar, the carbs, because there's so much of it in there. So our brain gets the wrong signal and starts trying to burn carbs to try to protect our bodies, and it is spilling over into your bloodstream, and then you wind up having diabetes, and then we have to take medication, and then there's medication, and if you spike your pancreas too much, because every time you cause a high increase of spike in there, it's going to hurt your pancreas, and then it gets to the point where your pancreas may not function as it should be functioning, and then we're down to insulin. And you're pouring insulin into your body when your pancreas cannot do it. But, you know, that can open a door for other diseases because most people that usually have diabetes usually have issues with their heart, their kidneys, your liver, because your liver is your filtration uh, system, part of your filtration system, so all that stuff is being filtered. So everything we put in our bi bodies pertaining to medicine or, or even supplements, it's got to go, it's got to be filtered also through the liver. And there are other fil uh, uh, organs that filter too as well, but we're going to look at that too as well. So it's necessary for us, in order for us to enjoy good health or to even have our health restored, is we have to do it right. We want to do it the way God says to do it because it affects every part of our lives, and uh, we want to be able to stew it, our bodies in a way that is pleasing to God. So we are thankful for the manual that the Lord has given us. And we, we also know that God created us in his image and after his likeness, right? Amen. And so he's given us um, a job to do, and it's a daily job to do for us to be able to walk in the way that he desires us to. So we want God to get all the glory for our bodies, too, as well, being in the most excellent uh, way that it possibly can, and we want the great quality of life that God desires for us to have, too, as well. So we want to get that. All right, let's look at the number 10, the, the 10 uh, most lively, lively causes of death as of 2020 is heart disease. Then cancer, stroke, accidents, respiratory diseases, Alzheimer. I'll say Alzheimer slash dementia because they are like twins. Diabetes. Pneumonia and influenza. And number 10, because it's been very active, is COVID-19. And um, then the organs, 
attack on our organs has been a big one too as well because everything we eat does affect our organs as well. Hallelujah. So like we said earlier, 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter verse 16 says, Know ye not that we, that we are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in us and we want to be responsible for our bodies and take care of them properly as well. And unfortunately today the church seems, seems just as um, unhealthy as the world. And, um, and we don't want to be as sick as the world. So we want to be able to, to achieve and maintain all that God desires for us in our bodies by taking care of our temples. So how do we con contract illnesses? Number one, we violate the health needs of our bodies by lifestyle choices. And there's an old philosophy that says that people believe that we can live any kind of way and all we have to do is just, you know, go to the doctors and he will fix it. But how, are they, how is it being fixed if they think it's being fixed? Sometimes it's being fixed by removing parts. So if you're removing parts, you really are not fixed. You're still broken. That, to me, that's the way I look at it. So, or they give us new parts. And if you get a new part, you're still broken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Medication. That's the next one. Medication. So if I take a pill, like we said earlier, the pill just covers whatever's going there. We still have not gotten to the root. So if I take a weed out in my garden, if I leave the root in there, it's still going to produce a weed. So the same thing there. If, the, if we don't know what the cause is, when we go to doctors a lot of times, They'll say, you have this, this, this. And it used to be back in the day when they would tell you why you have this, this, this. That they would explain it, take the time. But if now, because everything is so different, it's a whole lot different now with COVID. You used to get a, what, a 15 minutes? But there used to be a time when you can get up to 30 minutes to an hour in the doctor's office because it wasn't a rush. And you got down to the problem because they took time to, to discuss it and tell you what you need to do naturally a lot of times. Doctors will tell you, you know, you need to cut back on those carbs. <laughs> cut back on the fats. Can't have a sedentary lifestyle. You got to do this. And they will give you a lot of uh, a wisdom on things that we need to do. But now it's just like you go in, it's hit, 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 hit. What's going on? You tell them, they diagnose what they feel like it is, give you two or three prescriptions, and you just continue to go. Round and round. And if the prescription is the cure, why does it not cure me the first time I take it? Why am I still benefiting the pharmacy? And this, I'm still having diabetes or I'm still having high blood pressure. If the medicine is the cure, you see what I'm saying? God is the cure. And he's placed that in our bodies, and, but we still have to do our part. So if God heals me, in which he has done, a fibromyalgia, if, and if I just still did the things I did back then, which, you know, they say stress was a cause of it, um, overworking your body was an open door. So if I still continue to open the door, then other things can, will come in and break you down. Amen. And other things did because it started out with something simple. Then it was fibromyalgia, and then it was degenerative arthritis, and then it was uh, all of it comes back down to your immune system. And that's why you, you also have to wrap up your immune system as well because you can work and work and do everything and try to fix everything and et cetera, but are you being fixed? Because you're so busy fixing everybody up that you're not getting the proper nutrition, the proper rest. And next thing you know, you're on tilt. And a door is open. Because we did not take time to rest. We did not take time to do the spiritual and the natural and the physical. Amen. So we don't want to open that door. And, and you know, even when we think about COVID and you hear about how uh, 
certain vitamins and supplements are good for your immune system. And we've talked about this even in the beginning of COVID and et cetera. Zinc, because it was one point where you couldn't even find zinc. But zinc is an excellent one for your immune system to help boost your immune system up, and it's really, really good. But thank the Lord, you can find zinc now in large quantity. But in the beginning, it was missing. You could not find it. But there are vitamins and supplements that we can use for our bodies to get our bodies rare back up. But you still have to rest. Because if we, we open that door and we get our immune system down and our bodies down, we run our bodies down, then you wind up having adrenal issues. And once you get adrenal issues, you're going to be forced to go down and rest because your body will get to that point where it's going to feel like I can't go anymore. I can't do anything anymore. And your body will talk to you. It'll speak to you. It'll let you know. It'll sit out a warning sign. Warning, warning. Warning, warning. Got a headache. That's a warning sign. You got a fever. That's a warning sign. But we yield, do we yield to the warning sign most of the time? We continue to push. Got to push. I'm going to rest tomorrow. I'm going to lay down tomorrow. I'm going to put this on the back burner tomorrow. Got to watch it. That could sometimes be a trick. Amen? Hallelujah. So God is already placing our body everything that it needs to win against every attack that the enemy tries to send. Amen? Hallelujah. But in the natural, our bodies will, will, our immune system will do what it needs to do to fight out uh, the different things that are coming our way. And it tries to ward off the, the viruses and bacteria and et cetera that is trying to attack our bodies. So we thank God for that system that he's already put in place for us, and it is a blessing. Hallelujah. So that protective system is there, and even our immune system is monitoring everything. It's, it's just like it's a monitoring uh, device for us. It's there to monitor everything to make sure that the cells are doing what they're supposed to do. Everything is fine. But we have to do what we have to do to make sure our cells are clean, cleansed as well. And that's the part comes in play too with us taking care of our bodies too as well. Do you remember, you know, like in, in the winter time when, or it might be during the season too as well, when you may get a cough? And what do people normally do when you get a cough? They get cough medicine, don't they? And what does the cough medicine do? Suppress the cough, don't it? So if your cough is suppressed, is it coming up or is it staying down? If it's staying down, it's, if it's gonna cause what? Infection later on. So that's why a lot of times people go from having a cough to bronchitis, pneumonia and a lot of those things because we're not getting that up. And most of the cough syrups that we get are the people usually get during that time is a cough suppressant. But you need something to help you get it up. And you also need to have, make sure that you have fluid. But that's why they tell you drink lots of fluid because the fluid is to make sure you loosen the fling that is trying to get into your, your esophagus area and, in your, and your respiratory -ish area too. So you don't want it to turn into pneumonia or bronchitis and et cetera, so you do the fluids. And a lot of times, you know, you're told to do the vitamin C, which vitamin C is great for your immune system as well. Uh, vitamin D3 is very good for that as well too. Um, to me, you can never get enough vitamin D3. Uh, you can go out in the sun, and a lot of people don't even do that now, but vitamin D3 is really, really, really necessary for your bodies in a lot of ways. And um, it, it, it does what it needs to do, so we're thankful for that. Antibiotics a lot of times is um, good, but, but a lot of times there's res, you know, issues with antibiotics. When you stay on antibiotics so long, they wind up messing with your gut. And when you get your guts all messed up, you got an issue. You really got an issue because um, you don't want to create and destroy, you don't want to destroy the, the good bacteria, which a lot of times your antibiotics do. So a lot of times if you are on antibiotics for a long period of time, if they don't give you something for that, you can always use plain yogurt. And that puts back the good bacteria, that lacidophilus. Or you can get acidophilus or you can get um, probiotics for that as well. Because if your body is trying to fight in another area, you don't want to break down another area 
and hurt that area. So that's, that's a little nugget that will help you in that area too as well. So we talked about earlier about the carboholics and how we are, some of us, carboholics. We, our bodies crave that starchy stuff and et cetera, or sugary foods and et cetera. And, and sometimes we can overeat in that area because that's where our cravings are and et cetera. But it's, it's amazing how that urge for carbs and sugars and et cetera is, is, is a trick in a sense because those things aren't he healthy for your body. You need some carbs, but you need a healthy carbs. And there's no healthy anything in sugar. Sugar is, is like a drug. That's why we crave it so much. Amen. And sugar is in everything. So read your labels, your nutritional labor, labels, you will see it's sugar in there. And a lot of our food, uh, we're talking about refined carbs. It's what we're talking about when we're talking about healthy carbs, it's refined carbs. And what does that mean? It means that it's stripped. The uh, nutritional value of, those, of an item is stripped there. So when they go to produce it, and to make it have a greater and longer shelf life, your nutrients are stripped from it. So the manufacturers or the, or the companies are, are stripping all that off, and that's why it makes it easier to stay, turn into fat and stay in our bodies longer. So we do not want that, amen? Hallelujah. So we don't want to be, be um, addicted to that. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter verse 12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Amen? So all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. And then the latter part of that says, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So food should not have a power over us. Nothing should have power over us in the natural. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So when we look at the sugar, the, the, the danger of being a sugar uh, holic is that there, the diabetes part of it, where the hypoglycemia and then the hyperglycemia, the hypo is low, the hyper is high. But when you think about that, you think about the pancreas, how the pancreas, like we said earlier, could be wore out and hurt and damaged and et cetera. Because once it's spiked, it is going to be uh, put compromised to a certain extent too as well. And even when we look at our ingredients on our packages, read the first two, three ingredients tells you the bulk of what your the food you're consuming is all about. And uh, so we want change, right? So we want a healthier lifestyle that we need for our daily lives, and in doing so, it requires discipline and self-control. Does it mean that we got to invest some time in ourselves in the word called cooking? Yeah. It's good. At least you'll know what you have when you're cooking it. And you can control what you put in it. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're grateful for that. But the main thing we have to change that is good to change, I don't say have to change, it's good to change, is how we see things. Um, Things that we value, we invest in them. We value our families, let's invest in them. Let's invest in the time of, even if we have to put it in a crock pot or an instant pot or air fry or whatever, it's still a whole lot better than going to a restaurant and they dump it in the grease. It tastes good, but is it good for you? But once you start eating more of your food, you'll see that that doesn't even taste as good as you thought it tastes good. But your body will crave it, so. And then the disadvantage of that is when you're not eating healthy and changing the life, uh, making healthier choices and having a healthier lifestyle, you wind up seeing that there's a lot of weight gain uh, because the carbs are, are, are there, you got the, uh, the wrong types of oils and, and fats that we're taking in our bodies and different things. And you learn, you wind up learning the healthier fats and the healthier carbs that you need 
for your body, and you'll notice how much better you feel. So when we're sluggish and et cetera, because there is that increase and then there's that drop in our, in our bodies, that kind of throws us because it's a roller coaster when you're, when you're dependent on that and you're just reaching for those things that aren't the best thing for us. And so we don't want uh, to hurt our bodies and we don't want to give our organs extra work to do because our liver has to filter it, the chemicals that our bodies are taking in and, and et cetera. Our, our kidneys have to uh, filter the, the, the fluids that are going into our body. Our spleen is working on our blood system. A lymphatic system is working on our cells and different things there. And then our lungs is filtering our air. So even the things that we are around has to be filtered out to make sure our bodies are he he um, healthier too as well. So we, we just purpose in our hearts to eat more healthier foods and quantity and the quality of the food as well and eliminate as many uh, processed foods and packaged stuff that is not good for us, that are refined and different things as we possibly can. Because those things that aren't healthy are going to eventually try to break our bodies down. And um, a period of time it will will possibly be successful in that. And then eliminating stress out of our bodies. So we trust God's word and we put our trust in God. And because the stress, when stress is on your body, it changes everything in your body. It affects your body. And that's why most of your, your, your diseases that we have, stress is the underlying cause of it. We think about blood pressure. We think about diabetes. We think about cancer. It's stress is the underlying cause because it changes your body. And uh, so it's long periods of that can uh, change the makeup of your cells. And uh, so that's so important that we use the word of God, place it in our hearts, get it in it. And that way we cast all our cares away onto the Lord as well and feed the cells everything that they're supposed to have so that they can go forth and live in the way they're supposed to. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything is good to eat, right? Hallelujah. And we don't want to just fix the symptoms. We want to fix the cause of the problem. So we want to go for that. Hallelujah. We don't want our bodies deteriorating. We don't want to starve our bodies. A lot of times people look at it as cutting things out and cutting it completely out. That's fine. Moderation is good too as well. But you don't want to send your body into starvation mode because that causes another problem in our bodies too as well. If you're fasting, that's different. But, you know, uh, sometimes people say, well, you know, um, I, I've got this weight, so I'm just going to not eat for X, Y, Z days. Or you got, your body needs nutrients, and your body has to live off, and your body needs water. And a lot of what we need is water. Because once you have the right amount of water in your body, it flushes out a lot of things. It, it helps get rid of toxins and different things that are in your body that you have to get rid of to make your body work and function right. We won't uh, run our cars without changing oil or putting oil in it. And um, if, if we do, we're not going to get the maximum uh, result on our vehicles that we need to get. So we have to think in terms of you put the best stuff that you possibly can into your system so you can get the best out of your system. And exercise. Exercise is so hard to do this day and time, at least for me. But it's needed because it gets, gets, your, gets everything moving and et cetera, and also gets the oxygen to your body that we need as well and uh, keeps your, your system going and running well. So we need that. And uh, I remember uh, even when we were growing up, it just seemed like parents were more into what we were doing than they are today from what I've seen. They would even ask you down to the point of asking you um, to make sure your system was running properly, I'll put it that way. And they would ask us as children, are you regular? And they made sure they cooked the types of food that they got to the point as you got older, they didn't have to ask you because they knew, because when we're young, we don't want to eat vegetables. But 
you know, we need it. And we need it more on our plates, our vegetables and our fruit, the, the good carbs on our plates than we do our starchy carbs. Because that slows us down. It speeds us up and it drops us down. And uh, we don't want to open that door. So we want to go from having a slow metabolism to a increased metabolism. But the foods that we eat sometimes slows our metabolism down. And um, it also affects our sleep. And we want good quality sleep. Amen? Refreshing sleep. Our, our, um, our weight, we want to be able to, to have our weight under control so that it will, you know, help our joints. Help us to move more, all those things there. Um, cholesterol, when we're we're not not eating properly, we get the high cholesterol issues there. And I remember when I was younger, I used to think cholesterol came from just fat, but it doesn't. It comes from carbs, which is most of our problem. Uh, carbs. Um, I used to wonder you eat it, even though you eat a donut or you eat. Uh, pastries and different things like that. I said, well, you know, you only have a certain amount of oil that's in it. So it's not, it shouldn't be that much. By the time you split it, it's only a fraction of it you're being, you're consuming. But it's not just that. It's, it's the sugar part of it too as well. But sugar gets our body worse than anything. You know, it's that, it also says in uh, Galatians 6 chapter verse 7, said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For well, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall reap. Does this hold true for our life? In our eating too as well? If we're putting the wrong things in our bodies, there's a reaping for that too as well. If, we, if we're if we constantly staying in that, that vein of going and buying and putting and then not moving on top of that too as well. So we want to be careful with that too as well. And... Um, place the right things in our bodies and, and do the right things as well. Keep ourselves hydrated, as we mentioned earlier. It's very important for it to flush out everything and keep everything moving too as well. Does uh, my sodas and my tea and all those things count as water? It doesn't count at all. And, and you know, the soda can, the carbonation in the soda, carbonation in the soda is, is they have found that that's not as good, that's not good for your heart. So it does affect your heart, but you have so much sodium in there too as well that um, it's not good for our bodies too, so that affects our heart too as well. Um, caffeine, we have to be careful with caffeine because, you know, that's an, you can get addicted to caffeine as well. So caffeine, you know, moderation on that too as well because it does speed up your heart. And it does affect it. So, you know, caffeine is, is, is good in moderation. Your chocolates, you got to be careful with those two as well. Because um, there's a lot of caffeine in that too as well. We want to eat to live. Not live to eat. And that's a part of the, the long-term health that we want. Because we want to stand on God's promises. And we also want to do what he desired for us to do. And he gave us his manual that will help us to live long, to honor God in the process of it too as well. And 3 John 1, 2 says, um, one, uh, says that he, our beloved, he desires that we prosper. And a lot of times we look at prosper but we don't look at the other part and be in health, even as our soul prospers. So we don't want to stop on one part of the scripture and grab the, that part. Because if your health, if our health is compromised and we lose our health, it's going to cost us money. It's going to cost us peace. It's going to rob us in so many, 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 many areas. And it's going to not just rob us, it'll rob our families as well. So we want to do all we can to 
excuse me, go forth in those areas too as well. And our emotions, we as women, we're, we're more emotional than men are, at least most of the time. And uh, our emotions can be uh, an issue for our bodies too as well because of the way we can go in lockdown when it comes to challenges with our emotions and et cetera, and it can affect us mentally as well, as well as affect others. So when it comes to those challenges, we still refer back to scripture. Be angry. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Just got to let it go. Just got to let it go because if we're constantly thinking about those things, those challenges, those hurts, those areas of brokenness, it's going to affect our immune system and it's going to affect our organs too as well. Amen. Hallelujah. And our desire is to live longer and to live a life that is pleasing to him. So we want to continue to just um, build our bodies up and eat based on color. A uh, lot of vegetables and things that are fruits that are, are colors that are really good for us. Chew our food slower. We were taught that even when we was in school, but when we, as we got busier, we just took it down and kept it moving. But we want to process it. That's a part of our processing part is to make sure we chew it, chew our food very slowly and break it down and et cetera. But even the working of the jaw has been stated that that sends a neurological message to your stomach to get ready to prepare. And it also sends a message to the pancreas as well to get ready. But if we chewing it and swallowing it, it doesn't have the ample time to do that. Those digestive enzymes are, are not ready for it as way it should be. That can be a little challenging for us too as well. So we just, we just go for that. We want to make sure we try to lower our cholesterol and triglycerin. But even on the thing of cholesterol, we, we think about uh, our brain. Our brain is made out of a large portion. Uh, we need cholesterol for our brain. And most of the time, when I think about people with dementia, um, most of them are on cholesterol medicine that I have noticed just from people I know. Um, it's usually the diabetes medicine, uh, which is metformin and um, uh, Genuit, uh, different ones that are out there. But then there's always seem to be the heart-related issues that comes from diabetes as well. So then you have the cholesterol issues too as well because of the, the carbs is doing it to you, you know, that's causing the increase in the cholesterol, but then they give you cholesterol medicine but you have to have fats in your body. Your brain needs fat, but it needs the good, healthy fats. Amen? So uh, we just want to continue to um, eat healthy because it affects our eyes, it affects everything, and et cetera. Make sure we get the rest that we're supposed to get. Make sure we're getting the nutrients that we need and et cetera, different vitamins and supplements we're, we're, we need. And even when it comes to vitamin E, which is a very good uh, uh, supplement as well, uh, make sure it's not synthetic. Uh, there's a difference between the two vitamin E. One is D-alpha, which is the better one, and there's the one that is D-L-alpha. And I, I always used to, it when, a long time ago, I used to put it, put it in my mind as a reminder because there's so many different things that you try to think of, that try to help you remember certain things about uh, uh, vitamins and different things, but a DL is the one that's not going to be good for you. And um, so it's uh, the, the alpha, the D-alpha, that is the better vitamin E than the DL-alpha. The DL-alpha is the synthetic one. Make sure we fill our bodies up with fiber. We need fiber. And so eating food in a more raw state is a whole lot better for you as well. And um, it keeps your digestive system going. It keeps uh, help you to rid your body of things that should not be in there as well. Uh, breathing, we, we, we don't deep breathe like we should. And um, taking time to do that, sometimes even if you don't do it in the daytime because it's, it's 
Mentally, you don't think about it. But taking deep breaths and you're breathing properly and et cetera, that's why they ask you to work out because you have to. You can't force to breathe deep because you're tired and you're trying to get some air. So you're going down there and pulling it up. But your brain needs it. Our brain needs it and, uh, and et cetera. But also, you know, when you think about the carbs, the wrong kind of carbs too, it will cause the foggy brain. And it will cause to the point where it's just feel like, man, what did I go in this room to do? When we're eating a lot of carbs, it does that as well. But the breathing, we definitely need to make sure we're taking good deep breaths and et cetera. And uh, breathe in and hold it and, and just take time, blow it out very slowly and et cetera. So that's real good exercise too because you're also strengthening your, your, uh, your diaphragm. We don't even use a lot of times like we should. And uh, that's good to be able to do that kind of exercise too as well. So there's a lot of things that we can do as well. Um, you know, when we're talking about the stress part, Proverbs 17, 22 says, a mere art doeth good like medicine. It's there for us. Amen. We need that merry heart. It affects our immune system. It affects our mental. It affects our physical. It affects us spiritually too as well. Hallelujah. So we can't hold it. We can't stress out on it. We take it to the Lord and we give it to him. And we keep those positive emotions and laughter going on in our, in our hearts and our, in our bodies. And we don't sweat the small stuff. It's not worth it. Amen. And don't go to bed with it because your body needs that time to repair and restore. And we have so much stuff that's going on. And he says, don't let the sun go down on our wrath. And that's for a reason, too, as well, because our body needs need to be in that state of peace, in that state of, of uh, joy and et cetera. And put on some music. Read the word. Have the word going on. And uh, we trust God, right? Amen. Hallelujah. There's a lot of uh, eye diseases that are that people usually say comes with a different um, age group and et cetera. And there are things that we can do even with our eyes. And that, that's when it comes to our darker uh, fruits and vegetables is, is great for eye health as well. Um, when, we're, when we're not eating properly, we're eating a lot of your fats and your carbs. It does affect the pressure in your eyes, too, as well. And uh, a lot of times, especially during this time where there's so much pollen, we have to catch ourselves to not to rub our eyes because that is not good for your eyeball. It's not good for your eye health as well. So you want to be kind of restrict yourself. Just get you a, a, a warm compress and just place it up there on, on your eyes and et cetera, and that'll help kind of cool it down and keep it from being so uh, irritate or itchiness is uh, there and et cetera and uh, that's good for that too as well. There's a lot of vitamins and supplements that are there that will help us when we're pushing to try to go forward so we can get our health back that are good investments too. So it depends on what challenge a person might have health wise is you can um, you know either look them up or you can get those things like diabetes, you got chromium, you have selenium, you have uh, uh, your alpha lipoid uh, vitamins, um, your immune system issues, and et cetera. But your chromium helps with the carbs so that you're not increasing. Uh, it helps burn that carb off. And chromium picolate is better for that area versus the chromium by itself. But it is a chromium there that's out there. But they're really, really good. Um, there's a lot of uh, vitamins that you just have regular, like vitamin C, all your alphabet vitamins from A. To, uh, to E is good, vitamin K is for your blood, uh, vitamin E is for your heart, vitamin uh, B and C is for your immune system and anything else that ails you. Uh, your B vitamins are very good for your body too as well, your immune system as well, so those are really good too as well. Um, it's an investment, but it's a good investment. Garlic, a lot of people don't like raw garlic, um, but there's garlic that doesn't have odor. 
I works. It works. It might not work as good as the one that has odor, but you'll smell good at the end of the day. <laughs> but you know, you could you could sup you could supplement or uh, your um, you can um, use garlic and eliminate a lot of your heavy salt items that people use. You just use uh, 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 garlic and onions before you start pouring in a lot of salt. Just do the garlic and onion first. Taste it and see if that works for you. Then you'll be surprised. You're going to have to have all that other stuff in there. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. It costs more, but it's worth it. Is your heart worth it? Yeah. You're getting, the, you're getting and it's good for your joints as well. Collagen is good for, you, for your joints as well. Um, and it's also good for uh, diabetes too as well. So our bodies need those extra things that are out there and we can, we can um, you know, meet that need. And then just changing the way you cook. We cook the life out of everything. So where's the, where's the, the, the nutrients that we need if we are cooking the life out of it? Can you do greens different? Yeah. Throw some olive oil, some onion, some garlic in there, and voila, you there. And if you want to use a, a broth, you can use broth with it to give you a little bit. But you will, they will not know the difference. If that piece of pork ain't slimming and fl swimming in your water, they won't know the difference. Just don't let them see you do it. And even if they do see, see you do it, just say, hey, we, we're, we're living life healthier. We're changing. We're making a change that's good for all of us. Amen? Hallelujah. So there's different things that we can do to eat healthier. It just takes some creativity. You can look up recipes and different things like that. No matter what health challenges we have, we can look it up. We have, we have so much information that is out there that can benefit us. All I want to do is today is just point you in that direction. Let's get going. Let's start in that direction and doing all that we possibly can to keep our bodies, take care of these temples so that we can have the life that God desires us to have and we can just go forth. Because guess what? We're broke down. How are we going to be a blessing? And we want to be a blessing, amen? Not just to our families, but to everyone that we come in contact with. So let's kind of push forward, and I just want to use this as just a little motivation to get us going because, you know, if... Anything that the enemy wants is to destroy the body of Christ. And the best way he can do that is do it through our health. And guess what? He can't make us put this stuff in our mouth. We make that choice. So we just have to change the way we, we're thinking and say, okay, do I want to help him out with all this sugar? Which is going to make a lot of weight for us as well. So... Let's, you know, I just want to encourage you all to just keep pushing, uh, push for your health, fight for your health. Don't just sit back and receive everything that is coming your way according to your health that is not good. So let's push, fight, and go forth. And uh, we he'll get the glory every time. Amen? Amen? Will you bless the Lord right now? Amen? I think this is all we're going to do today. Praise the Lord. Glory to God.